Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Let's jump into some art. Alright, today I have a digital speed paint for you. Uh, this is a speed paint I did on my new iPad uh, in the program Procreate, and I was also using an Apple Pencil, the second generation. Um, if you would like more details on like, the, what I think of this program and think of drawing on an iPad, you can check my check out my last video. That's where I, you know, sort of introduced it, talked about my first impressions and stuff. So today we're going to talk about a really fascinating topic to me. I think that it is incredible what humans are able to do with um, ideas and inspiration that we get from nature. Um, and there's actually a name for that. It is called biomimicry. Uh, that's essentially just getting inspiration for different and new technologies from nature. Uh, and then, you know, innovating something based on it. There is so much that we can learn from nature, and it's super fascinating what sort of solutions nature has come up with for different problems that we now experience uh, in our own lives. Uh, so we need to find ways to work around them, and a great place to look is to look at nature. So that's sort of the inspiration for this artwork. Um, it's a, a superhero that is sort of based on some sort of animal. She's biomimicry is, her biomimicry is based on a cuttlefish and it, her suit is sort of like it's able to camouflage just the same as a cuttlefish does. The, they're really amazing how they're able to change colors. They're related to octopuses and squids, um, and they have that same color changing ability that humans are now trying to figure out and harness ourselves to, you know, there are many uses for this sort of camouflage, especially in like military actions and stuff, but like there's so many, much use for this and, you know, Camouflage is something that nature does pretty regularly, so I thought it would be a great idea to, you know, incorporate that into my art for biomimicry. I did have several ideas for the design of this piece and for what sort of superhero I wanted to do. I thought maybe I could do something that was sort of based on, like, the flying squirrel, so I have some sort of uh, gliding technology. There was also an idea for like having gecko-like uh, gloves for climbing and I was playing around with a couple ideas for you know costuming and stuff what kind of suits but it, in the end I decided I was most excited about the technology uh, that could be gained from using the cuttlefish as inspiration so that was what I went with for my uh, my drawing and then you know around that she's sort of just standing on a cliff the edge of a cliff I don't really have a reason for that I just like the layout um, I was pretty intentional about the layout with this piece I wanted her to be pretty uh, central but I also sort of played around with it uh, the idea of you know two-thirds, which is a pretty big thing in photography especially, but it's always good to incorporate that in artwork. It just gives it uh, a little bit more uh, visual um, clarity and, you know, just makes it stand out a lot more and look more appealing uh, to have uh, things arranged in the two-thirds. So I have, like, the... Um, the horizon line on the ocean is sort of uh, two-thirds up from the bottom and then the edge of the cliff is kind of two-thirds um, from the 
right side of the canvas so I did try to make it as balanced as I could. I also flipped the canvas at one point and then I forgot to flip it back. I'm pretty sure it's alright. <laughs> I am not in the habit of flipping the canvas. I know it's something that um, is really useful in digital art but I've never gotten in the habit of doing it and so I don't do it often and sometimes I just forget to do it <laughs> or do it return it to the original way so you know at least it looked good both ways so it's not a problem um, yeah I think that's mostly all I wanted to say for the art oh wait no there's one more thing so the color scheme I used for this piece was from an app I was using an app to generate it it was an app on my iPad called wheel masks um, which is this really interesting la app that allows you to sort of create a color scheme based on like the different uh, color families or like the different shapes like a triad or, or you know complementary and then it allows you to figure out what sort of saturation what brightness you want and then you can export your color palette to procreate so that you can just grab colors from it directly which is super convenient it's super fun to play with and you know it was a fun color palette it was a really great way to make it cohesive um, definitely not a realistic color palette but I really love the colors a bunch of the colors and how they go together I really want to get better at color theory and also just expand the range of colors that I use I s definitely stick very close to the cool tones um, in my art and I would love to have more variety, more color contrast, and all sorts of stuff in my art um, just to make it feel a little bit more realistic or more vibrant, a little bit more lifelike or lively, whatever. It, I think it, it could provide a lot for my art. I just need to push myself out of the comfort out of my comfort zone a little bit. So that is something I will be working on. Uh, and definitely with the help of this app, which I've been loving. Alright, so now let's talk about this thing called biomimicry. I explained in the beginning a little bit what it was. Uh, it's really windy right now. Okay, so biomimicry um, is technically uh, the use of, you know, natural designs for human de inspiration and technologies. So it's something that we can incorporate into our technology and use, um, but the original inspiration came from nature. Um, so, you know, it's hard to always give a direct correlation to some, just one piece of nature that did it, and sometimes it's really easy. So some, um, some examples of biomimicry uh, would be so some uh, architects I read about were doing a new design for like heating and cooling buildings that was based on termite mounts um, which is really interesting so what it was is the termite mounds are able to regulate the inside temperature by opening and closing different areas uh, at different chambers in their uh, in their mounds and that was that moved air through and was able to trap heat or let air through and you know expel heat so that even when it was really really hot they stayed cool and when it was uh, cooler they were able to stay warm uh, and then they were the architects were able to incorporate this sort of design into an actual building that didn't require any energy input to regulate the temperature which is just amazing first of all that they didn't have to have any um, air conditioner or uh, or furnace or anything to um, take care of the temperature inside it which is super amazing because so much energy goes into this in so many places um, but also just like that was where the idea came from was these 
termites out in Africa or wherever there are termites in lots of places um, but yeah so that was one example another one I've heard about that you know you can think of is uh, animals like the bighorn sheep which have these you know big horns on their head that they use for ramming into each other um, at certain times of the year and this is a great design that keeps them from getting any brain damage when they do this um, which is something that we can incorporate to into things like helmets and stuff which um, are you know really important always wear a helmet um, and they are able to protect us somewhat from some things but some impacts still you know cause brain damage uh, because they don't the helmets don't really absorb very much e energy they don't absorb much of the impact which means that you know it's still possible to get injured uh, it's not as likely that like the skull will get broken but the brain can be damaged and um, the bighorn sheep their horns are able to you know prevent this they um, I can't go into like the details I haven't studied this thoroughly but they are able there's like different air pockets and um, fibers inside the horns um, that are able to absorb lots of energy um, which is really interesting and uh, that's how they can keep themselves safe and it's another example of how we can incorporate nature's innovation in our own technologies and then of course we're back to the cuttlefish which is what I decided to uh, model my design after so the cu cuttlefish have a really interesting ability uh, to change colors uh, by having they have like sacks of pigment in their skin and they can they have lots of muscles around each of these little sacks that can expand and spread the color out or they can contract to make it like almost invisible so they have several different uh, colored pigments and depending on which ones are open they have a different color and a different pattern and the other really really incredible thing about cuttlefish is they don't have to be looking at what they are um, what patterns they are trying to emulate so they don't actually look at the background behind them to blend in with it and we still, still don't know a lot about how they do this but it's suspected that there are some uh, sensors on their skin that are able to see sort of understand what color they're um, sort of up against and be able to signal back to the skin to open or close these different pigment sacs and that way they can change colors almost instantaneously it's super fast um, and the patterns are super close to uh, what the background is that they're trying to hide into which is just really incredible and they're so fast at it um, that I just, I just find it so amazing and it will definitely be very useful when we are able to implement this sort of design into our own repertoire and we can have clothing and um, different like vehicles and stuff that can blend in with their surroundings uh, that easily and we don't have to the thing about biomimicry is we don't actually have to have the exact same mechanism for uh, whatever we're trying to accomplish it just has to be inspired by nature in some way for it to be my biomimicry so there are so many things um, that we don't even think of anymore as being nature inspired that that's where they came from for example for example velcro was first inspired by uh by nature by a like 
a seed burr that you know grabs onto like a piece of clothing or animal's fur that's where the inventor got the idea for velcro that have something with all these little hooks that could grab onto something yeah we don't really think of that anymore and we kind of just take it for granted but it originated with nature um, and there are so many interesting things out there that uh, we're still on the verge of finding and I'm just so excited to see what kind of technologies we're going to come up with in the future and what next. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this speed paint. Uh, I really loved working on this uh, and I really hope you enjoyed the multiple uh, perspectives that I was doing with this. Um, I was trying out videoing uh, the actual screen so you can see uh, where I'm actually putting the pen in different places. Uh, I thought it would be uh, a good idea to get a little bit more of a better a little bit better of a picture of what I'm actually doing um, as well as like the distant picture and the video I get from exporting Procreate. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed this painting and researching for this video. Uh, if you would like to know more about the topic, uh, you can check the description for more information. And yeah, that's all for today. So until next time, live life respectfully. Okay, bye.